Mauricio Pochettino is very much under fire as Chelsea manager following our 2-2 draw against Sheffield United. But has there been progress made since the start of the season under Mauricio Pochettino or are we now worse than we were at the start of the season? I want your lot's opinion on this, by the way, so get your comments in right now. But there is only one man whose opinion I need on this and that is the big dog, channel fan <laughs> favourite, Josh Aveste. Josh? How's it going, mate? I'm going to get that tattooed somewhere. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. so iconic. That have you got any tattoos? I haven't, no. Maybe no. maybe that should be the first one. Should I get it tramp stamped? I have thought of a brilliant tattoo idea, right? Go on. I've never seen anyone with this. Only only God can judge me. I've never seen that before. No. Do you know what? You're very you're very unique with your tattoo or, ideas. Or, you know, I like a bit of uh, different... Rough. Different, <laughs> di bit of... Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't like a bit of Damien Duff? Um, no, I'm thinking different language, right? Yeah. Carpe diem. Yeah, yeah. Well done, well yeah. done. I, I knew, I heard, by the way, you studied Latin for quite a long time at school. Is that Latin? Yes. Is it actually? Yes. I always thought it was French. No, it's not French. No. No, he no. is just joking though about that. He honestly did know it was Latin. He did study uh, Latin at school, at his private boys' school that he went to mm -hmm. until he was 18. So just, just so you all know, that's what Joey's background I is. I think you can tell I'm privately educated, I, can't I think, you? I think from... you can. Yeah. What I do you think you my strongest subject was at school i know what it you're gonna say you're gonna say biology <laughs> no you're gonna say pe aren't you yeah. it definitely it definitely wasn't biology no i'm not gonna say pe i'm gonna go english you know <sighs> i'm gonna go english because you've got you've got a little bit of way with words you? do you know what Ooh. you have smashed it out the park there <laughs> english and right we did a we did a subject called film studies and I took it because I thought that I was just going to get to watch like Titanic and stuff like that all the time. And it turns out that I did, I did watch a lot of Titanic in that lesson. But do you know what I learned to I'm use personally. in that lesson? Yeah. Go on, tell me. Guess. Was it the editing software? It was iMovie, oh! which I still edit on to this day. So, Mr. Derbyshire, thank you very much. Any upcoming YouTubers, that's all you need to know, by the way. Just a bit of iMovie. Just get started. Mm -hmm. iPhone and iMovie, just do it. Just that's get it. going. To all of you guys watching now, just start a channel. Just start it. Just start it. Um, we have managed to get three minutes into the video without speaking about Mauricio Pochettino. It's been a lovely three minutes, <laughs> to be honest, because the sooner we start speaking about Poch, the more the mood and the vibe in this room comes down. Just quickly... I just want your thoughts on Sheffield United. Did you do a video after the game? I didn't. Um, no point. Why. My I, one I fucking wonder, flopped. I wonder why. What was I doing on Sunday, Joey? <gasps> Congratulations <laughs> to you. Josh Aveste was running through my mind all day and also through Brighton when he did the marathon, not the half marathon for you lot who are a little bit weak at the knees and you can't stomach a whole marathon, this man just smashes it out, out the park, in one. How was it, mate? It was good. I have to say, we're 48 hours after the event and I have to say, I've only just been able to walk properly. Mm. So that you need tells a rub you down? everything you need to know. I needed several rub downs. Mm -hmm. I nearly got a personal misuse to the house. Yeah. That's how seriously I was taking nice it. Nice little blonde Ukrainian fellow, was it? And I did it? say, yeah. I did say to the missus, I said, you know, there has to be a happy ending involved. And unfortunately, the masseuse wasn't booked. No. I've always <laughs> thought that it should be a happy beginning. A happy middle week. Because I mean, otherwise, you otherwise, you're getting this massage and you're waiting around the whole time thinking, oh, I know what's happening at the end. I'd yeah. rather get out of the way. Done at the beginning. Now I can properly relax. But Joey, it's Key all about the, the build-up. It's yeah. all about the build-up, though. Mm. Come on. Mm. The tension. <laughs> Speaking of build up or lack thereof build up, we didn't manage to put six or seven or eight like Newcastle did past Sheffield United on the weekend. It was pretty pathetic, in my opinion. Yeah. Do you have any more doubts or any more questions after that performance of Mauricio Pochettino himself? 100%. Don't you? Like, I think for me, the team selections, do you know what? We've let a lot of team selections slide, haven't we? Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, when, we, when it was Colwell at left back, we were sort of going, yeah. Fine, I'm happy to see that if it means a bit more defensive solidity. Yeah. Then you go Sanchez in goal and you go, yeah, he's all right, F fine. And there have been a few um, square pegs in round holes, haven't there, throughout the season. And this one was the worst one of them all, I think, oh, if you mate. look at the team selection. It so let's talk about it for a second, because I think the team selection is indicative, actually, of yep. Mauricio po Pochettino going forwards. Can I give you go the on. one that I'm not massively, massively worked up about in that team selection there? I'll give you it. 
I don't... I was about to say I don't hate it. I don't have a massive, massive problem during an injury crisis with De Sassi at right back. I that's, do. That's the one I don't have a huge problem with. Who would do a better job at right back right now than Axel De Sassi? Trevor Chaloba. Yeah. I say- mean, he's played at okay. right back for Chelsea and done very well. He has. And very, he's more attacking he than has. De Sassi. Very good. He was on the pitch. I, I know. That's Who's the, the better centre back? Axel De Sassi or Trevor Chaloba? I, I would say I would say at the moment De Sassi. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, look, Trevor has always been better in a back three. We know that. Mm. And I know why he's pairs in with Thiago Silva, because one is slow, one is fast. You you know, one is less less able in the air, one is better in the air. One has got the experience, one doesn't have the experience. I, that, like All of that makes sense. But it makes far more sense with De Sassi being in the middle and Trevor being on the right. Mm. I like, do you know what, actually, if we're thinking about it, maybe uh, Trevor is the second or third best centre-back we've got at the club right now. Maybe he is better than De Sassi. But if you're saying, who's a better right-back? Trevor, who's a better centre back, Trevor? So maybe let's just have Trevor as the best option. De Sassi is not a right back. He's never been a right back. He doesn't have the physical condition to be a right back. So, mate, square pegs and rad holes. Can I tell you someone who has been a right back? Who it's really weird, yeah? Considering Pochettino sort of thinks that maybe Conor Gallagher can be a left winger. Maybe, you know. Uh, Kukares should be playing at right back. Maybe De Sassi should be at right back. There's a lot of players. Played out of position. Ben Chilwell, left wing, worst one of them all. Um, there's a lot of players that Pochettino believes that he can he can sort of put his twist on and tinker with a little bit. There's one man who has played at right back. We've literally never seen there. And sometimes in matches, I'm looking at the options we've got and I'm thinking maybe he'd be served best off there at times. Caicedo. Yeah. We've never seen him there. Yeah, back at no why I don't know why we've never seen him there before. Especially when you think about how knackered he is mm. and also how he's often put in those positions where he has to pick up the ball, turn and, and play passes. Mm. Maybe it would be good to just give him a rest from that. I feel like them two are running on empty. They're man. done. They're, they they've been done weeks ago. They've been done yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. So Listen, it's a massive disappointment, uh, disappointment, I yeah. should say, the Sheffield yeah. United match. We're not going to go too far into it. Let's talk about the job that Mauricio Pochettino is doing. I said on a podcast recently that I didn't believe that we were any better right now than we were when Mauricio Pochettino first took over. I was lo- using sort of results to back that up. You know, obviously, first time round, we did manage to beat Burnley. We didn't the second time round. Sheffield United, we did manage to beat them first time round. We didn't the second time round. I've looked at performances against teams in the second time we've played them this season. Okay, Man United, that was different. That was a different story. But for the most part, I'm looking at things and I'm thinking, I don't know if we're getting better as the season goes on. I don't know if our play is getting better and the patterns of play we're seeing is getting especially any better or any more consistent as we go forward in this season. Is Mauricio Pochettino making this Chelsea side better right now? I've got a stat for you. Are you ready for this? Strap yourself in. Our performance against the bottom half of the Premier League. How many points we've dropped this season? Would you like to have a guess how many points we've dropped against the bottom half? Oh, I wouldn't like to, but I will. Um... How many points have been available for selection so far this season? I don't even know, but, it, but guess it. Guess it would probably be half our games, 15 games times three, 45 points, roughly. So out of 45 points available, oh, mate, I'd say we've dropped about 26 points. We've dropped 23. But, but to put it into context, you know, back in the day, that would have been two or three, mm. you know, when we're talking about the actual Chelsea that we're talking about, that we remember, it, we wouldn't have been anywhere near that. So 23 points, you know, it, even in the last week or so, it's four points against Burnley, sorry, total this season, four points against Sheffield United dropped. Mm. It's, it's really shit, isn't it? Yeah, it's not It's not good enough. And obviously earlier on in the season, we were trying to identify where the weakness is. We were saying, oh, okay, we haven't got a goal scorer. Ironically, we scored twice the amount of goals that we did last season. We were saying, oh, we can't deal with the low block. But then teams that weren't looking to play a low block came to Stamford Bridge or we went to them and they managed to do us with a different style of inflicting the defeat upon us. So when we're looking at things now, we're not seeing progression. We're seeing certain players that at certain points earlier on in the season were looking like they were performing really well. Their levels have now dipped. I'm going to use the examples. Raheem Sterling, 
Conor Gallagher is another one who I think's level has dipped since earlier on in the season. Benoit Badia-Shill, when he came back and came into the team, I thought he was looking good. Now he looks very shaky. Axel de Sassi, I thought opening there against Liverpool. Okay, you look quite good. And there was a couple of performances in there. And now he's very, very much hit and miss. There's no one really, barring Cole Palmer that, and, and Melo Gusto, I should say, that I've seen from the start of the season, say, consistent with their performances. And also, when we're being told about the job that Mauricio Pochettino does with young players, very, very hard with a young squad to identify the ones that you can definitively say, well, that is Poch's work he's done mm. there. So with things coming together how they have been, what is the, say, for example, are you Poch out right now? I'm I'm starting to go down that road. I, I can't say that I'm officially Poch out right now, to be honest with you. And look, I think I'd be doing a disservice. So it's to answer your question directly, I'm Poch in at the moment. Mm. But I'm, I'm going along the road where it's starting to seem more and more negative. Okay. That's fair enough. So being that you are potching for the moment, what is the what is the hope? What's the optimism going forward? What do you think you can rather, and I, and I use the word hope there, maybe I shouldn't use the word hope, because what do you think you can actually confidently say, right, this is enough to make me believe that things are going to come good or at least come better next season? I think to say that we got to two uh, cup finals potentially would be a saving grace for him, even if he didn't win it. I think, you know, being Man City getting to a final, even if we don't win it, would be progress for us. Of course. I mean, that would be brilliant. And I think if we did finish Hold in the on. top eight... Let's not skip over it, though. Do you on. think we'll beat Man City? No, no, I don't think we would. But that, but you're, the question is... Uh, and you're basically question, answering what is going to save him his job. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and that's what that's what I think will save him. So if he's in two cup finals, and I think if he finishes any higher than eighth or above... I think that would save him at least until, like, let's say January next year. And in terms of, like, style of play, right? Because when we're looking at Chelsea at the moment, I actually think that our goals always look quite good, right? But they are isolated moments in matches. So, say, yeah. for example, the match me and you were at, we went to the Burnley game. We were looking forward to having a really, really good day out. It started well, but it soon got fucking miserable, let's be honest. And the goal in that game, when Raheem Sterling comes on, little back heel pass to Cole Palmer through the lines, Cole Palmer slots it home. That goal is the sort of goal that gets scored by a team who are riding high, probably top of the Premier League. And when you look at a lot of our goals, in a lot of our games, the, the, the team played there is nice. And it's hard for me to be able to put my finger on it. Is that a result of something that happens when you've got a manager who is drilling certain passages of play and little attacks on the training ground? Or is that just a result of what happens when you've got a billion pounds worth of players in your squad? I've, look, I think we've got a brilliant squad. I think we've got players up and down the pitch, really, if you think about it, that can change games. Now, the, the elephant in the room is that we've got one amazing player that is contributing so highly and so far above all the others that really we should be saying is that there's only one Cole Palmer. Mudrick. There's only one person. Oh, Mudrick. sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh, Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, only he's yeah. only second behind Mudrick, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's 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 Close. been all right. He's been yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to, you joke about Mudrick, but to be fair, he's probably been like second or third out of those other options in terms of yeah. you know per game numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come per on, numbers, I mean, per game, but he, 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 listen, Cole Palmer, he's no Mudrick, is he? I mean, <laughs> he's got more pens than a staple stationery warehouse, so it just yeah, you know, I don't we, know, I would. We, we I love him. Know. Yeah, we do love we, him. We do love him. Without, you love him especially more than anyone. Cole Palmer, <laughs> where would we be? This well, we season? looked at it. Someone's done it and we would be 17th. So. Would we? Yeah. God. Uh, <laughs> it's a damning indictment. Uh, to answer your question, mate, look, I think, um, I think at the moment we aren't playing well in the games we even play well. So, like, look at the Man United result. We that was, we were five minutes away. We were five minutes away from Pochettino being gone. Mm. Like, so to even answer your question, whether Pochettino Poch out, he was gone after that Man United Mate, result. Uh, so many of the results this season, right? And you look at like three two against Brighton. Yeah, I thought we played rubbish. Three two against Newcastle. I thought we played rubbish. Uh, what was the was it was it two one against Crystal Palace last minute penalty? Three one. Three one. Three two against Leeds United. We played absolutely awful. And four two against Leicester. Again, we played pretty shit, didn't shit. we? So there's so many results in here that we're talking about, and we're going, yeah, yeah, good results, but the performances aren't there. And it's mm. only fair, like we dig out Man United week in week <laughs> out. Sometimes it feels on the kickoff, and that's because, yeah, okay, sometimes they're getting over the reliant, the line, sorry, with their results, but the performances just aren't there. So hard for me to give a start to finish performance that I've actually been happy with this season. Yeah. I can think of one. Can't think of one. 
Aston Villa, 3-1 away in I the cup. I was thinking that same but game. But it's hard when you've played, what, so far, what have we played? 40 games this season now mm. or something? Not far off mm. um, in all competitions. It's hard to then only really be able to pinpoint one performance where I've gone, do you know what? I'm happy with that start to finish. Yeah, some of the loot, maybe the Luton game, first one, Burnley game. Oh, was that first that first one. Luton game? We went dead for about... 60 minutes of that match yeah I mean to, to use those two as examples is, is a damning indictment isn't it mate it's not a vote of confidence to say where, we played well against where's Luton. the comfy 2-0 win we don't get that anymore. I mean if we had won this year, we, we did we beat Sheffield United 2-0 this season there you go but okay. realistically there should be loads of them yeah but this is what I mean when we're talking about points dropped against the bottom half like those are the points that we would have been back in the day would have been two 3-0 easy wins mm. and actually other teams in the Premier League that are higher up than us they do just do that like Arsenal you know go week in week out just do 4-5-6-0 in fact they did that in a row they did a 4-5 and then a 6-0 in a row and we just don't do that anymore and look uh, we're, the, everything that we're talking about right now is about Pochettino and I think the inconsistency of the performances and actually if they are footballing people maybe this is the fact that, that actually saves them that they're not footballing people because if they were footballing people they would be able to understand that even the wins that we're doing at the moment are not confident you know wins they're not they're not out and out what Chelsea would have done back in the day wins and so mate there are so many reasons I think if we had a longer time we did a pros and cons list there are lots and lots and lots of cons for Pochettino there are loads of things tactical inability second halves you know half-time team talks you know playing players out of positions you know there's so many things that you're just sort of going what is going on and also mate let's just call it out for a second I think there are a lot of people that are potch out in the fan base because he was a Spurs manager like, mm. I, I don't even think you'll ever I be able actually, to get out I that. actually think that that's not something I've ever really levelled at him. Like, I think it's a very easy narrative to push, especially in the YouTube media and stuff like that at the minute. Oh, he's making us Spursy. I get it. Like, I do get it. But at the same time, you know, I don't really care that no. he was a Spurs manager. Ultimately, well, it doesn't, doesn't bother me all that much. What bothers me is just like the performances aren't good enough. Tactically, he doesn't, you know, strike me as a manager that's tactically equipped definitely not as tactically inept as some of the managers at the top of the league even managers below him in the league I look at and I think yeah you are way more proactive than reactive you know look at the substitutions they're not very good the worrying trend with the second half I won't go into it too much because anyone that watches the channel knows that this is how I've spoke about before but we never come out good for a second half we never come out better for the second half than we did in the first half and it makes you think well, what is he saying to these boys in the dressing room because clearly he's not not tapping in he's not getting a tune out of them mm. I really don't know I really don't know what there is apart from I mean even that right the the case you gave two cup finals and a top eight finish that's not enough for me no that's what I'd saves still him still fucking sack that, him that's, that's, that's what saves him I, if you're asking me to now defend him which I think mm. we should do because I like look I mean I want to ask your perspective on it as well because we should we, mm. we deserve that the fans deserve that but like I think there are so many negative parts about this, but there's also some mitigating circumstances. Mm. He's had to bed in a brand new squad, which I don't think has ever been done in the Premier League era. I don't think anyone has done the amount of re the revolution that we've done as a football club, mm. where we've not only gutted the playing staff, but every other management position. Like we're basically creating a new club from scratch, right? And and then we're doing that with the youngest squad in the Premier League ever and actually the youngest squad in the top five European leagues. Mm. So that tells you everything you need to know. They're then getting used to the Premier League themselves as players. Then you've got an injury crisis, unprecedented, probably the worst injury crisis that Chelsea have ever had. Mm -hmm. You know, significant first team injuries persistently throughout the entire season. And then you're, you're dealing with all of the other things about it, about the pressure of the job, about having to deal with this week in, week out, about players not necessarily listening to his instructions, if there are any. You know, there are mitigating circumstances and reasons why he should stay. And potentially the only real reasons that I'm giving him any time of day are the injuries and the sort of the young squad. Because I think what he said this week is really, really telling me. What he said this week was that what he needs is and he said this in a paraphrased way, but what he was saying was that I need experience in the squad. I need leaders in the squad. And I need to build a different profile. And we keep bantering about this word, but a different profile of the players because we can't go into next season with this inexperience because the, the key thing that we're determining more than ever is that at the end of games, when you need to just lock something down, back in the day, Chelsea would have played it around the back. Mm. We would have taken the piss. We would have time wasted and now that isn't a factor, but you would have slowed it down, done everything you can to take the, skin, uh, the, the sting out of the game, right? And yes, that comes from the manager, but also... There's only so much you can do from the touchline. You've got to have leaders there. Back in the day, we would have had leaders that are doing that. And I think until the management of the of the football club do it, 
you, you, the manager's going to find it very difficult. So look, I, I feel, I'm finding it hard at the moment because you have to give the other side of it. It's a nuanced issue. And that's why there's not a switch always where you're potch in, potch out. I think he's on borrowed time. I think we need to make that really, really clear. Mm. But I think there is there are mitigating factors why he deserves a bit more time. I'm not saying the performances are good. No, do you know what? I would actually, I think you're speaking a lot of sense there. And I do, I do look at it and I think the injury crisis would not have helped. The fact you are bedding in a completely new squad is definitely something. The fact that you've only really had pre-season to get to know your players. And look, we saw the starting lineups in pre-seasons and uh, in pre-seasons, sorry, and it doesn't reflect the starting lineup now. There is no Reese James in there, you know? Pre-season... I don't even know who we were starting in goal in pre-season. Was it Kepper? It may well have been before yeah, it was he got Kepa, shipped Because basically out. we did a video, you and I, we did a video predicting the squad mm. pretty much the week before the transfer window closed and Kepper mm. was our number one goalie. Yeah, exactly that. So there's so many changes, you know. In Kunku, we did not think that we would be without him for pretty much the whole season. When they brought Romeo Lavia in, I'm sure they thought that he would be a rotation option in that midfield. And we have been dealing with, at least, you know, trying to trying, trying to do the job with half the toolkit. I very, very much understand that. The problem is that I look at other managers. I look at maybe an Unai Emery, Eddie Howe when he first came into Newcastle. Different examples, uh, Gary O'Neill, different managers that I look at. And I think you got a tune out of a struggling squad a lot quicker than Mauricio Pochettino is able to out of this Chelsea match, uh, out of this Chelsea squad. There's been matches in this season, which makes me think, you know what? If we're not better off for points, we're definitely better off for moments. We had no moments last season. This season, we've had the draws that felt like wins. We've had, obviously, knocking Newcastle out the cup and the road to that cup final. We've had Man United, the other match in a game, that, the other night, sorry, in a match that, okay, we didn't play all that well, but we had a real, real good moment there. And there's enough there to make me think, okay, maybe this guy needs to be kept in the job and given until, let's say, Christmas or something like that. The worry for me is by that point, the damage is done. We wave goodbye to the hopes of another Premier League season by that point, and then we really are in a mess. And we know that, you know, mid-season appointments can can often take a long time to to just start again, you know, to go again from the start, which is draining for us. Mm. So go on then, tell me, mate, go on. Are you potch in or potch out? Right now, right now, right now, the the furthest I can go for you is say I'm not potch out right now. Mm. But then saying that, it's like that doesn't mean I'm potch in. I'm just mm. I'm not potch out because I understand the 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 circumstances, the different factors that go into it, that go into appointing someone else. Am I happy with the job that Pochettino is doing? No, I'm really not. No. And I and I do think that the better moments we've had this season have been a, as a result of individual brilliance. I yeah. don't believe there is a result of something the manager has done, something the manager's done to change certain games, to change moments, to give the best opportunities. Like, even when we look at starting lineups now, you know, the starting lineup that he picks for the Man United game, we couldn't have picked a better starting lineup than that. I mean, you look, let's talk about that then. There's an argument to say that he did impact the game in the Man United game. There is an mm. argument to that. Mm. So it brings on Noni Madawake, you know, ch who changes the game. Yeah. So, so to, look, to be, to, you have to be fair in these sort of things. There, there have been a, uh, examples like that where he has made tactical changes. Who, and I, I who, have to who's, say, your, who's your alternative? Who's your alternative? He brought, he brought on Noni Madawake, who changed the game. He brought Noni Madawake on the 88th minute, mate. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It was too late. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Right, 100%. who's the alternative? You bring it. You're, you're bringing yeah. an attacking player on the eighty eighth minute. Yeah, who's the alternative? Because if you look at the bench, there was no alternative. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, it's difficult to beat him with the stick, though, and then say when someone does come on and change the game to say that he hasn't changed yeah. the game. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's disingenuous to do that. But, but then to your point, mate, which is fair is how many other games has he done that this season? And I'm trying to think, I was trying to sort of rattle my brain there about other examples. And I can't think of many other examples where he sort of pulled it back in the last minute. So mm. I think I think your general point is right, but like just that Man United example, he has, he has changed it. I know you read the comment section. You do a lot better job at it than I do from time <laughs> to time. I am busy with all the editing. Um, but we can see from the comment section that the fan base, especially the online fan base, the subscribers to our channels, they are turning on Poch now. Mm. And I think a couple of bad results and you'll very much see, you know, calls from maybe even inside the stadium for Pochettino to be sacked. Um, let me let me throw one more scenario at you here, right? Yeah, I've on. told you what he needs to do to save his job, right? How bad does it need to get? 
for him to lose his job. I don't think I don't think it's very much worse than it is now. I think he's on a knife edge. I, mm. I really, really do. I think I was looking, and we'll get into this because we're going to do a full video on this predicting the rest of the season. But I think if you look at some of those games coming up, you know, Everton is our next game at home. Mm. I mean, if he doesn't like at least get a draw in that game, it could be it could be curtains then, couldn't it? If you think about it. And I think if um if the city game goes as we think it probably will do, and we're out of that. And then we also have a bad run of games, next two or three games. It could be done in the next two or three games, mate. It, it really could very, very easily. And that's why he's, he's walked a tightrope this whole season. Mm. And, and that's not going to go away now until the, until the end of the season, to be honest with you. And then even over the summer, if there are any managerial vacancies or a potential name that's been leaked or what, fancies the job, it, it's going to be mer manager merry-go-round all over. He's got a few things going in his favour, Pochettino, hasn't he? Firstly... He's got the facts that, okay, if it did come to sacking him, who makes that decision? Because, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to read between the lines. Is it even Todd Bowley anymore? Is it Igbali? Do these two even still speak? Is they it, look, they look like they were yeah. in each other's pockets yeah. at one point, very, yeah. very close. Now it doesn't even look like they speak. The other thing he's also got going in his favour is there's not a leading name on the market. And if there is, bearing in mind that Liverpool are going to be looking for a manager, Man United, bearing in mind Barcelona. that Man United, Bayern yeah. Munich, yeah. Barcelona, yeah. all these teams are going to be looking for a manager. It's going to be very, very hard for us to secure a name. So yeah. we're going to have to luck out like Spurs have really. I don't truly believe that Levy knew that, um, you know, mm, Postacoglu, sorry, about the same Rochelle Pochettino, maybe <laughs> he is a bit Spursy, <laughs> that Postacoglu is going to be a great manager. I think yeah. that to an extent they gambled on it, to an extent they'd done their research and to an extent they lucked out a little I bit I mean, on that it, it so, was their eighth choice, wasn't it? Pretty exactly, much. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we might have to hope for something like that. Yes or no answer is Mauricio Pochettino in the dugout for the first game of the 2024-25 season. <sighs> Prepare yourselves. I think he will be. Mm. What do you think, Jay? I think he will be too. <laughs> yeah. What is so funny, right, is that there's so much doom and gloom at the moment and one result could completely change that, but we are still, we're still in the same perpetual scenario that we're, we've been in all season, mate. It's still going to be bad. This is the thing, though. We've said for a long time that we're in a transition and I think the sooner people realise that a transition doesn't immediately happen, the better for us because mm. it's going to take time. And, and I don't think even if we changed it, it's going to immediately get us, propel us back to the Champions League. So we've got a strap ourselves in mm. people i want to know your opinion have chelsea progressed as a team this season under mauricio pochettino i understand there's so many underlying circumstances here but are chelsea any better as of today than we were on august the 12th on the opening day against liverpool get your comments in the comment section below i'll be reading through all of them i'll try and get back to as many of you as i possibly can i will see you all in the next one